You've been made free through the blood of Jesus Christ. You need to make sure nobody knocks you off that. Now, I've mentioned this in the last several weeks, several months we've been going through this, is that our churches, I don't even, we don't, not even going to care about the other, you know, Catholic churches and all that. I'm talking about our churches have been famous for decades for allowing people to be saved by grace through faith, eternally secure, but you better do what I tell you to do or you're really not in fellowship with us or yeah. the Lord. In other words, they start putting rules and regulations back on top of you as to homeschool or not to homeschool. Whether they have a TV, don't have a TV. TV. If you don't tithe, God will kill you. Or you know, or, or rip your eyeballs out. Or do something really fun to you because it's not a heavenly father that loves you. He's an extortion and a blackmailer. Yeah. But what happens is leaders in churches, wherever they might be, Sunday school teachers, preachers, deacons, elders, whatever the case might be, uh, they feel that they're losing control instead of teaching their people how to live by the power of the Holy Ghost and the freedom Jesus Christ has given you. And that's what frustrates saved people is that, folks, you can never live up to my standards. And honestly, I can never live up to your standards. That's why we point people to Jesus Christ. If we compare ourselves among ourselves, you'll drive yourself insane. I can never lead as many people to Christ as Billy Graham did. It's impossible. It's impossible. Whether he, I, 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 I understand he went apostate in hell. I, I get all that. But if you listen to that boy preach in the 50s, that's a very good Bible preacher. And you can't tell me all those conversions were false. I can never catch that man. You will never be able to preach like the guys we like to hear preach. You have to preach the way God would allow you to preach the power of the Holy Ghost. I'll never be able to draw like Dr. Rucker. I don't have this mind to do that. I don't have the mind of James. I don't, I don't have that. And I would say most folks don't. But you get frustrated by chasing other people and their standards. Paul's saying, no, you stand fast in the liberty wherewith Christ hath made you free. And don't get put under any bondage. If Jesus Christ made you free, you're free indeed. Mm -hmm. That doesn't mean we're renegades and we do whatever we want and we dress well yet. No, but I've got to trust the Holy Ghost is telling you through that Bible mm -hmm. how to live your life, and I have to back off. Mm -hmm. That's where that meddling gets involved, and it really it disheartens people. It disheartens people. Folks, you've heard me say it before, I hate religion. Well, which religion is that preacher? Is that Catholic religion, Mormons, or Jehovah's No, the Baptist religion. Yeah. <clears throat> I hate the Baptist religion. And we got it in spades. Yeah. The same Spirit of God that saved you is the same Spirit of God that can control your congregation members if you let Him. That doesn't mean you don't have to roll, you know, roll in the animals every once in a while. It doesn't mean you, have to, you don't have to preach hard. You don't, no, it's just, you know what, at some point in time, you don't, can I really influence you on what you're going to do in life? Let, let's be brutally honest about it. Can I tell you? I mean, I can tell Bob what to do. He's brainwashed. Burn <laughs> by, burn by anything I buy, and that's true. <laughs> but I mean, realistically, can I make you go street preaching? No. Can I force you to give? If you say no, you say no. God doesn't get in the way of that. Mm. But then you try to turn on the screws and get some more pressure. He don't be. It frustrates the trial to save people. Mm. I got saved out of that stuff. I got saved out of having to go confess my sins to another man. I got saved out of having to go to church. Jesus Christ made me free from all that. I want to serve him and love him now. And that's what he's going to find. He's going to finally crescendo this thing in chapter number five to these folks. I want to, I want to take a look and stand fast because you've got a lot of folks that are falling away and they fall away for a variety of reasons. Uh, I would say, you've heard me say before, most verbal testaments, you've passed for many years. Most people don't leave because of doctrine. They move, they leave because of he said, she said, rumor monger, I don't get away with, I don't get along with them, and the carpet's not right. No, there's something going on in your heart that you just chose to pick that one thing, and now you're out in the car country. That's the reality of it. And people don't stand fast very much. And, and some of the things when you when you start imposing rules on people, they're like, I ain't hanging around that because we're rebels by nature. But he still tells you to stand fast. I want to take a couple verses, uh, a couple of looks at the stand fast. It's pretty neat. 27, Brother Justin. 27, uh, chapter 27, 27 to 41. And that was a little bit of a, a stretch, but go ahead and do it, please. 27 to 41? Yes. Chapter 27, verses 27 to 41. Yes, sir. Yep. For when the 14th night was come, as we were driven up and down in Adria, the 
about midnight, the shipment deemed that they drew near to some country, and sounded, and found it twenty fathoms. And when they had gone a little further, they sounded again, and found it fifteen fathoms. And fearing lest we should have fallen upon rocks, they cast four anchors out of the stern, and wished for the day. And as the shipmen were about to flee out of the ship, when they had let down the boat into the sea, under color as though they would have cast anchors out of the foreship, Paul said to the centurion and to the soldiers, Except these abide in the ship, you cannot be saved. Then the soldiers cut off the ropes off the boat and let her fall off. Mm -hmm. And while the day was coming on, Paul besought them all to take meat, saying, This day is the fourteenth day that you have tarried and continued to fast it, having taken nothing. Okay, how many of you are thinking what you're going to have to eat when you get out of there go shopping at Aldi or whatever? Fourteen days they went without eating. Yeah, okay. Fourteen days. You're shaking right now thinking about going 14 minutes without a lifesaver. <laughs> you a lifesaver or something. Yeah, I know you do, man. Blood sugar's dropping, your KO. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. 14 days. So they're kind of freaked out. Boat's a wreck. Yeah. Paul's telling them, you should have listened to me. Yeah. And now, check it out. I'm a real good guy. You know, Romans 8.28. He's 8.28. You no, should listen to me, man. I'm mm -hmm. Well, anyway, look how it goes. About standing fast. Go ahead, brother. Uh, Justin, 34. Wherefore, I pray you to take some meat, for this is for your health. For there shall not in a hair of fall from the head of any of you. Mm -hmm. And when he had uh, thus spoken, he took bread and gave thanks to God in the presence of them all. And when he had broken it, he began to eat. Well, I prayed over his food and even in the middle of the ship. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Wow. Go ahead. Then were they all of good cheer, and they also and they also took some meat. And we were in all in the ship two hundred three score and sixteen souls. How many is that? Somebody tell me how many 263 two hundred sixty-three How many? How many? Two hundred sixty-six. Two hundred seventy-six. Seventy-six. Oh. Watch, you guys. You guys are close. Two hundred three score, which is sixty. Oh, and then so 16 plus sixteen. Mm -hmm. So two sixty plus six. So two hundred and sixty and sixteen. I'm not being smart with you. You just people read that all. I'll just read right through it. No score is twenty. So when people quote Abraham Lincoln four score, there that's that's the score is eight. So go ahead, brother Justin, keep on going, please. And when they had eaten enough, they lighted the ship and cast out the wheat into the sea. Real quick, can I? Uh, I, I just can't not do this, man, because I'm psychotic. <laughs> it, what did he tell you? To, what did he tell those boys to do? Take in verse 34 for their hunger. He said, "Take you some what? Some meat." Okay. Well, what did they end up casting out of the ship to lighten it up? Mm -hmm. What is the offering in Leviticus that's the number two offering? It's a meat offering, and what is it? It's a bloodless grain offering. Yeah. Yeah. It's a neat little thing in there. I'm not saying they didn't eat meat. I'm just saying how God just kind of yeah. bookends it with meat and then wheat. Go ahead. Yeah. Yes, sir. And when it was day, they knew not the land, but they discovered a certain creek on the shore, and to the west they were minded if it were possible to thrust in the ship. And when they had taken up the anchors, they committed themselves unto the mm -hmm. sea, and loosed the rudder bands, and placed up the main sail, sail to the wind, and made toward shore. And followed into a place where two seas met, they ran the ship aground, and the fore part struck, struck fast, and remained unmovable, but the inner part was broken with the violence of the waves. Thank you. So what's the picture? Sail down, here they go, they're, they're just letting the wind take them wherever they're saying, Lord, it's wherever the wind takes us, and the ship is coasting in, and they're going to this inlet, and the Bible says that the forepart of the ship sticks. So they basically run aground. Bang. But what does it say happened to the second part of the ship? The hinder part. It gets destroyed right by the waves. So what's that a picture of where we're taking a little bit of time to look at stand fast? Your forepart is Jesus Christ. In fact, he's called the forerunner who is in heaven. He's the anchor. He never moves. But the backside of the ship, you and I, we get tossed around from time to time, and sometimes we end up on splinters of boards and like a castaway floating out in the middle of a sea with a lifesaver. But you know where we're going one day? We're going to that heavenly shore because our forepart is stuck there. You know what? He's unmovable. What did Paul tell his Galatian believers? Stand fast. Where? In the liberty that Christ has given you. Because of what he's given me, I don't have to get back into the bondage of the law or the foolishness the man puts on me. We're not talking about anarchy here. I, you, you folks know that. I'm not trying to beat a dead horse with it. You know I love dead horses. It's great meat at McDonald's. <laughs> what I'm trying to say to you is that 
if if the rules of mankind put you back in shackles that Bible says you don't need to have shackles on, sorry, that's man-made, that's not the Bible. And of course you get branded as a rebel and you don't care and you want to, no, I'm just trying to enjoy my Christian life without somebody telling me what to do like my priest used to tell me to do in the backwards call it. That doesn't mean it's anarchy. He's the head, the preacher or whatever. He gives direction as God leads him. We're not, you know we're not talking about rebellion. We're just saying, you know what? You're putting rules back on me. You, the only rule we have here is just please wear a tie when you're in this pulpit. That's it. If you're a woman and you're up here singing, wear a tie. When you're singing, <laughs> wear a tie. Yeah, there you go. I'm just saying, but if you're a man, you're up here preaching, pre just put a tie. If you're sitting there, I don't care if you wear a tie or not. There's no rule for that. I, I don't. I won't even say the crazy. Well, you wear a tie for work, don't you? I'm like, no, actually, I don't. Know. <laughs> I haven't for quite some time. So, when you wear a tie for well, I get it. You know, you get. But see, you see, even the slickest preachers will say is, well, you, you dress up for a job interview, would you want to dress your best for Jesus? Now, I get that. Yeah. But why do I even have to say that? Yeah. You kind of pick up the flavor of the way safe people dress by hanging around safe people and the way they dress. Yeah. I don't need to tell you a dress code. God will tell you a dress code by the Spirit of God and the freedom you have in Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. Not all I know, this is probably going to go as heresy. You know, oh, no, no. No, this is why churches dry up because yeah. the power comes from the man, not the Spirit of God. Yeah. And I, 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 I don't, I need, to, I need to put them back in shackles. They're getting a little loose. Maybe just to join the Christianity. Maybe you ought to take a vacation, buddy. Not to Disney World or Disneyland, but take a vacation <laughs> like in Myrtle Beach where there's a lot of missionary work on those trains. A lot of missionary. A lot of missionaries. Yes, there <laughs> is. You, you got 18 chances to witness every time you play now. Yeah. You got 18 missionary fields. First Corinthians 15, Brother Bird. First Corinthians 15, I know these are common verses for you, good reminder. He says the fore part is unmovable. The hinder part, man, we get tossed to and fro with the waves of life, man. Sometimes they get broken. Yeah. But our four part never moves, man. Brother Burke, can you get 15? I know you I know you know this uh, by heart, but 15, 51 to 58 would be, would be awesome. Behold, I show you a mystery. We shall not all sleep, but we shall all be changed. Amen. In a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, at the last trump, for the trumpet shall sound, and the dead shall be raised incorruptible, and we shall be changed. Amen. For this corruptible must put on incorruption, and this mortal must put on immortality. So when this corruptible shall have put on incorruption, and this mortal shall have put on immortality, then shall be brought to pass the saying that is written, Death is swallowed up in victory. O death, where is thy sting? O grave, where is thy victory? Amen. The sting of death is sin, and the strength of sin is the law. But thanks be to God, which giveth us the victory for our Lord Jesus Christ. Therefore, my beloved brethren, be ye steadfast, unmovable, Amen. always abounding in the work of the Lord, for as much as ye know, that your labor is not vain in the Lord. Why, do they, why are these Galatians struggling with their liberty in Christ? Why are they arguing over somebody coming in with a different gospel and somebody hindering them as we'll get to it? Somebody telling them that circumcision enhances their Christianity. Why is that happening? Because somebody moved them off their doctrinal eggs. Yeah. Uh, there's a lot of churches that used to preach the Word of God the way we go at the Word of God, and now they're just faded off to nothing. Now, I understand God may have a time and a plan for a church, a candlestick, uh, and Revelation, the church of the candlesticks, and some of them, God walks with the candlesticks and all that. I understand all that. And maybe the candlesticks' time is done. And God says that church was good for 20, 30 years, five years, whatever. I don't know. And then he says, that's enough. Let's shut that candlestick down. But there's still a lot of candlesticks that God wants to have going, but they've changed their doctrinal stance. Their, they, you know, Because it is more difficult seeing people saved now, and Christians seem to be dropping by the wayside more and more. So they have to change things like the music and the tempo and the beat and the well, activities and all that stuff. You moved. You moved and God said, don't move. We have great liberty in Christ. Just don't use it to go off into the deep end. There's some things I'm not going to move on. King James Bible, not moving. Uh, Pre-tribulational. Pre-millennial, not changing. Dispensational salvation, not changing. It's, it's not happening yet. And a list of other things you can read here, Dr. Stay. I'm not changing unless I have biblical reason to do so. But there's some, the King James Bible is not up for debate in this moment. It's not. 
Don't come up here with an iPad either, yeah. or your stupid phone. I'm unmovable about that. Yeah. You ought to be unmovable about certain things. Not a jerk about it, or just, I'm, uh, I shall, I shall, I shall not be moved. You just never move at all. Yeah. I'm just saying that there's some things you just can't move on, man. He's telling the same stick to it in this that he gave you in Acts 27, uh, that Justin read, and Brother Bird read right here. I'm not, I'm not supposed to move off that liberty, man. Mm -hmm. it, it's brutal, man. You see, you see good, thriving churches again. It's almost like they get throttled and they get choked out. Mm -hmm. and they Strange stuff, man. Ephesians 4. Let's do this. Uh, Karen, Ephesians 4. A little Karen, Haley, we can't be right across the desk. It's going to work out good now. <clears throat> Karen, Ephesians 4, another commonplace. That's why Paul says to the Philippians, I know I'm saying the same thing to you over and over again. Mm -hmm. uh, it doesn't bother me to do that. Mm -hmm. For you, it's safe. Yeah. It, it, it causes safety in your life hear these things over and over again. Mm -hmm. Karen, can you get 11 to 16, please? Ephesians 4, 11 to 16. children, uh, henceforth, what? Tossed Toss where? To Do you know of anybody in the Bible that that term is ascribed to that sticks out in your heart and your mind? Well, when the sons of God came and the devil joins them in front of God and Job, where do they say they've been? Oh. So I know who's associated with to and fro movements, the devil. That's not all the, only, the the eyes of the Lord are in all the earth running to and fro. I, I, on behalf of them, I, I understand that. That's a great verse. In, uh, it's in Second Kings, I believe, or Chronicles. I'll have to look that one up. It's escaping me at the moment. But I, when I see to and fro, the first thing I think of is that old roaring lion. And his little, his little band of buddies, the sons of God, walking around. Just, uh, yeah, where you going? Ah, I'm just going to go to the mall today and see what Christian I can trip up. You know what? I'm going to take it trip to uh, Third Baptist Church down the street and see what I can do to mess some people up. And, you know what? I'm going to go on the street and see if I can get those folks distracted. He said, you know what? It happens that Christians aren't locked in and given to sound Bible teaching. To and from. They're, they're movable. They're not unmovable. I'm not talking about growing in, great, in the grace and knowledge of our Lord Savior, I'm not talking about adding to your faith. I'm talking about there's folks that used to believe sound biblical principles and foundational truths. They don't. They're not even. They're not even around them anymore. Yeah. And what he's saying to the Galatians is, you know what? I want you to stand fast in the liberty to have. Who would think liberty would be a great doctrine to learn? But it is. It's big enough for him to spend all that time on it. Because there's people out there that want to take your freedom from you spiritually. And it's crazy. I'm not even getting political around, but. That's the way typically governments take over. What do they do? They remove God, religion, take away weaponry, mm -hmm. kind of consolidate the funds, make you dependent on Big Brother or Big Mama government. <laughs> and what does it do? It 
shackles the people up. Uh, I remember in the early 90s, I don't know if Brother Bird probably re remembers this, but I, we were sending cases of Bibles to missionaries over in Russia, and they weren't lasting on the street. You know, when the walk, whatever, when did the walk come out? They, that was in Germany, but it was going up to 80, 89, somewhere in there. But I remember when that kind of opened up the, the, the Berlin Wall and all that stuff. Missionaries, honestly, were taking cases of Bibles onto the street in communist countries, and people were just lining up, lining up like they were getting food to get a Bible. Liberty, man. Freedom to pursue the God of the Bible. You say, well, those are just heathen, reprobate people. Or, uh, this is happening. Paul's addressing the churches. If somebody's trying to take your liberty away. And he says, you better stand fast, man. Don't be, don't be movable in things you shouldn't be movable. I mean, you've got to stand fast. Uh, what, what does 1 Timothy chapter 4 say? That in the latter times, some shall do what? Depart. How do you depart from the faith? Well, that's like you losing your salvation. That's you departing from what we quoted this morning. The faith, which is quite bluntly the Pauline epistles, man, as a saving person, eternally secure the body, you leave that teaching. And what does the Apostle Paul specifically teach? Rapture, it's a mystery. Baptism of the Holy Ghost, eternal security, all the stuff that people fight about. You got people departing from the faith. What do they do? Giving heed to what? Seducing spirits and what? Doctrines. They teach the Bible better than you and I do. You got you to know what you believe, man. You got to be unmovable. You got to be unmovable in these things. You're going to take some beatings for it. The hinder part always does. The fore part never moves. That's Jesus Christ. You're going to take some beatings for this, but don't don't be unmovable. Don't be tossed to and fro. Go over to James chapter 1. Oh, yeah, we're going to get back to the 12 tribes. Oh, yeah. Haley, I'll give you the 12 tribes tonight. Hmm. James chapter number 1. <laughs> it is interesting how it ends in Philemon and goes to Hebrews, is it not? Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's Paul only. I'm like, no, that's called reading it through and taking notice of the way God laid out the Bible. And yes, somebody showed up to me, but now it's my duty to show somebody else. You can't tell me how the script flips right if I leave it to a book called Hebrews. Yes. And then James. Then Peter. So then first John's gonna mess everybody up, so I anyway. <laughs> <laughs> James chapter number one, Haley, one through eight, please. Common verses again. <clears throat> Love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness. 
What do they do when they temper steel? They harden. How do they do that though? Oh, well, I'm not sure. Get it? It's the exact. They temper it so they can take the max amount of pressure and heat possible without making it brittle so it breaks. Mm -hmm. Tempered glass. Yeah. Well, you don't, you don't, you don't, you don't want stuff to be unstable. It needs to be stable. We don't need safety with being unstable. Mm -hmm. You know why? Because my forefront, my four, my four part's not moving. He's not moved. It's pretty cool how that works out. He's telling those commissions, you need to stand fast. Stand that liberty. Because people are going to come along and try and knock you off that liberty. I'd like to enjoy coming to church. Not just this one. I think, come on, man. That, that's nothing that I'm not even talking about this year. I'd like to enjoy coming to church. I'd like to be able to write out a check for an offering. I'd like to be able to go street read. I'd like to do that without any impending cloud that I have to do any of those things. Mm -hmm. I want to do it because I'm the Savior. Yeah. I want to do it because of the glorious liberty he's given me to serve him. And I want to stand fast in that. Folks, of all people, we have the most easy of all time, man. Mm -hmm. I mean, Brother Justin just tried to give a track to the lady out there, and then the guy... And I don't mean try, he did, he did, but they, they, they didn't take it one way since you say we don't play. We've, we've seen her many times, but think about the freedom you have and the ability you have in 2022 and actually for obviously the last many, many decades to hand the word of God in a piece of paper yeah. to somebody. Mm -hmm. The liberty we have, just general liberties, the freedom we have and the gospel we have. Mm -hmm. It's bizarre how much freedom we have, particularly in America. We'll take advantage of it. Don't, don't let anybody knock you off that. But use it not for your flesh, but to serve others and serve the Lord. It's just it's cool how that works. Uh, Colossians 2. This is a this is a rewrite, and that's why I had to go back to the fall like this. Okay, so I, I went I went to, I went Hebrew, then I'm coming back. Colossians 2, Mackenzie. Colossians 2. You guys good with the air? Are you okay? Are you okay? I like it. Oh, oh. Red meat is on sale at Hoggers. I love Go red buy meat. a steak. Yeah. I try to force her. I bought the huge box from uh, Omaha Yeah, Steaks. but see, we, we got to get it out of the box. <laughs> yeah, I need it. We have to season it. We have to fire up the grill, and we got to cook the thing, Bob. Yeah. Seriously. I'm 90 pounds. I'm from Ethiopia. What's wrong with you? Ethiopia. <laughs> we turned it off. Brother Bird was sweating this morning. He did. He just took his coat off. Man, I know, but I'm yeah, cutting the air down. But you know, killing the guy over here. It wasn't because of the air conditioning. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> I'm, just saying, I'm just saying, man. I had a little conversation this afternoon with the yeah. watchers. Yeah. <laughs> hey, man. Colossians chapter number two. Mackenzie, do you have Colossians two? In between playing with your sister, can you hook me up here? Two, one through seven. Maddie's tough to get along with. I know she is. Believe <laughs> me. Two, one through seven. Go ahead. For I would that you know what great comfort I have for you. You got it. As for as many as have not seen my face in flesh, that their hearts may be comforted, being knit together in love unto all the shape of the full strength of understanding the acknowledgement of the mystery of God and of the Father and of Christ. That's pretty cool. And you are hid all the treasures of wisdom and knowledge. Amen. And this I say, lest any man should beguile you with enticing words, for though I be absent in the flesh, yet I am with the Spirit, joined and beholding the order that steadfastness of your faith in Jesus Christ, as have therefore the true Jesus and Christ Jesus, the Lord so walk you in mm -hmm. rooted and built up and established in the faith, as you have taught abounding therein with thanksgiving. Thank you. Rooted, built, established. You know what Jesus Christ is called over in Isaiah 11? He's the root of Jesse over in Revelation 22. He's the root and offspring. Uh, offspring. I'm to be rooted in him so I can stay unmovable in the things that I'm not supposed to, I'm not supposed to move away from them. Especially the liberty that I have in Christ Jesus. What's it cool about this, and Mackenzie read it, did you see what he warns them about in verse number four, folks? There's four warnings given to Coloss the Colossian believers. Verse four says this, and this I say, lest any man should beguile you with what? Enticing words. 
What's going on in Galatians chapter 1? Mm -hmm. Isn't somebody telling them there's another gospel? Mm -hmm. Somebody's whispering to them about circumcision? Folks, it's words. Hey, have you seen this video about we're going through the tribulation period? Mm -hmm. Have you seen what this guy preaches? Have you seen it? And it all comes from words. Why? Because they want to get you off those words in your lap. And they might even use the words in the, your lap, but not rightly divide them. That's a pretty wild thing right there. He says, the first thing I want you guys to be aware of is people will come along to use enticing words, seducing words. And how, what did Mackenzie read in verse number one? What was the city? What was the link there? Lay out of what? Now, what church age are you living in right now? Right now. That's the only book you'll find Laodicea in or Laodiceans mm -hmm. besides Revelation. Mm -hmm. So if you want a letter, mm -hmm. an epistle that matches up with what's going on in Laodicea, even though it's 2,000 years ago, but the God's timeless, it's eternal, you want to spend some time in Colossians, mm -hmm. which of course is really close to Ephesians. Yeah. But it's enticing words. It gets them, even right here, it says, look, watch out for those guys coming in there. Just remember, you're rooted built and established in him. Pretty cool, man. All right, I, got, I have one more on this. Second Peter. Second Peter, please. I struggled where to put this one as we were going through, or as I was going through this and writing some stuff down. Second Peter, uh, Paul, yeah. chapter three. Actually, excuse me, that's not true. Mm -hmm. It's chapter, uh, you know what? Yes, I need to, it is, it is three. I'll go to two in a minute. Mm -hmm. Second Peter three, I need you to get uh, verses 13 and 18, Brother Paul, if you could. Mm -hmm. Nevertheless, we, according to his promise, look for new heavens and new earth, where it dwells righteousness. Wherefore, beloved, seeing that ye look for such things, be diligent that ye may be found in him in peace, or of him in peace, without spot and blemish. And no, you're talking about spot and what? Well, huh? without spot and in blemish. No, no. Right again. Without spot and blameless. Oh, blameless. Okay. You're so used to seeing without spot and blemish yeah, in First Timothy, yeah. First Peter. Yeah, I'm right. up. Well, the new Bible has nothing reading skills anyway. <laughs> <laughs> no, it, it split right there, so I kind of. Oh, no. oh man, now are inexcusable. Oh, now that read us the Cambridge oh, Bible incorrectly. Oh, no. oh you. I failed it hard. Oh, sit down, no. Just stand up. Take, <laughs> take over for your man. Okay, can we do it without spot with the right cup? Okay. Yeah, no, let's start with 14. Okay. Therefore, oh. beloved, the same that ye look for such things, be diligent that ye may be found of him in peace without spot and blameless. Sweet. And account that the long suffering of our Lord is salvation, even as our beloved brother Paul also, according to the wisdom given unto him have written unto you as also in him his all his epistles speaking in them of these things mm -hmm. in which are some things hard to be understood which they that are unlearned and unstable there rest, you go as they do also the other scriptures unto their own destruction ye therefore beloved seeing ye know these things Amen. before beware lest ye also being led away with the error of the wicked fall from your own steadfastness Amen. But grow in grace and in the knowledge of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. To him be glory both now and Amen. forever. Amen. You know what happens when you don't get Paul nailed down? It trickles down to everything else. And you rest, you, you learn and unstable, you, you you'll wrestle, you rest with the other ones. You'll twist them, turn them to your own to your own destruction. But you've got to be careful that that doesn't affect you and you fall from your own steadfastness. That's the warning in all this. But don't be unstable. I did this in a roundabout way to bring us back where we were in Galatians chapter 5, verse 1, is that stability in the life of a believer is huge. That doesn't mean you're not going to have hard times or, or you're not going to have uh, uh, valleys and, 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 and mountaintops. But how do you stay stable through all that is through your anchor, Jesus Christ, in this King James Bible, the promised Spirit of God. Uh, I've said it before, I'll continue to say it. What usually happens to saved people, they're excited, they're saved. God will typically give you, um, as a newly saved person, he might even give you a couple really good witnessing opportunities, but after that, it kind of gets a little more difficult. 
He knows people aren't as receptive to your conversion to Christ as they once were. And maybe you led some people to Christ and they're not getting saved as much anymore. And, you know, church is not as enjoyable anymore. It's weird how that happens. It's almost like the Lord gives you just enough, like, yeah, this is really cool. And then he's like, okay, now it's reality, son. <laughs> it's not that the whole life is not joyous. It's just like, you know what? You get bogged down and a lot of people fall out when they hit that first mm. drop off. And they're like, I thought getting saved would, have, would cure all my problems, Justin. I thought getting saved, no, it solved your eternal problem. Yeah. It didn't take care of the temporal problem. It just now gives you the source to get you through your temporary problems, the Lord Jesus Christ. Your eternity got taken care of forever the day you got saved. But now I've still maybe got 30, 40, 50, 60 years. I don't know. And then when you get saved, I don't know. But through it all, you're supposed to stay stable. You know why? Because he's stable. Mm -hmm. You ever notice the Lord never loses it when he could have? Even in the temple, he's in full control when he loses his mind. When he, when he, when he gets angry at those guys in Mark 3, fully under control. Mm -hmm. When he could have lost it, and what could you say to him? I'll fight you at the playground. <laughs> I don't like the way you looked at me, Jesus. You know? <laughs> yeah, okay. Okay, go try to take him on. He'll just say one word and your arm will fall off. Mm -hmm. But he's stable through everything. And are you telling me he didn't have peaks and valleys? Feeding the 5,000, feeding the 4,000, then having everybody betray him and get Sam uh, outside of Gethsemane on the way to the cross? Stable through it all. Uh, the one thing we always struggle for in our life, we talk about the word balance, correct? You know, not too high, not too low. Try to stay in between, you know, you know not, not, blue, not just weird and kind of, you know, tripping out. But... You know, I'm going to get hit with some stuff that's not very cool in my life. Mm -hmm. If you get through this life unscathed by sickness, thanks be to God. Mm -hmm. But you're going to get some sickness. You're going to have trouble with money. You're going to have cars breaking down. You're going to have leaks in your house. You're going to have all, you're going to have friends leak. You're going to have all kinds of stuff going on. Stability is, is huge and balance to that whole thing. That ties right back into Galatians. It says, you know what? We need to stand fast in the liberty. Mm -hmm. Don't let anybody take that away from you with their words or their actions or put some weird rules on you that God didn't put on you because it'll make your Christianity miserable you'll be saved but miserable and God does not want that for you and I all right let's look at Liberty that was that was a good wow <laughs> all right let's look at Liberty these are just little these are what we call brother Bert what are these Sniglets. you better believe in me <laughs> Leviticus Leviticus 25 please I want to show you how Liberty shows up in the King James Bible the first mention and we'll just look at a few of these. That's, that's crazy, man. Yeah. Uh, I'm going to be working for everybody in the Millennium Kingdom. I know it, man. I'm going to be working for everybody in the Millennium Kingdom. All right, Mo, are you up? All right, Leviticus. It's in the Old Testament. <laughs> Give me a minute. I mean, ah, it begins with L. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Leviticus. I don't want to go. Come on. Okay. The little sniglet threw me off. Uh, it does. Bird has a way of kind of uh, destabilizing yeah. everybody. <laughs> what was we the call Bird the nitro genius. Well, nitro is on the yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, All right, Mo, you ready? I am ready. Okay. Leviticus, chapter 25, please. I need you to give me uh, 8, 9, and 10. I just want to show this to you regarding liberty. This is the first time King James Bible uses the term liberty. Now, I was not, I was not just give me a second. I, I was never in the military. I, I wasn't. Uh, people accuse me of that, uh, that even in those, no, I just keep my hair tight because I don't want to deal with it. I'm not military. I, the, the old man gave me a choice. It's either the military or go to college. You know, looking back, I probably, yeah, I would have probably went from the Marines and done that. I would have done it that way, but. I would end up getting killed by my own people and all that stuff. Friendly <laughs> yeah. fire. They would have just blown me down. But, uh, I was never in the armed forces, but when somebody has liberty, now, Brother Bert, you're in the middle. When you have liberty, what does that typically mean? It means you're off, you're free. Or it's, your own, it's your own it's time, time, right? Yeah. It's your own time. It's not military time. You're not under Uncle Sam's time. So, liberty to a military person is it's a reprieve. It's, it's your, you do whatever you want for 48 hours, for whatever it is, okay? So now read this, please, Mo, and then it'll set us up for where, where I'm going. 
And thou shalt number seven Sabbaths of years unto thee, seven times seven years, and the space of the seven Sabbaths of the year shall be unto thee forty and nine years. Mm -hmm. Then shalt thou cause the trumpet of the jubilee to sound on the tenth day of the seventh month. In the day of atonement shall ye make the trumpet sound throughout all your land. And ye shall hallow the fiftieth year and proclaim liberty throughout all the land unto all the inhabitants thereof. It shall be the jubilee unto you, and ye shall return every man unto his possession, and ye shall return every man unto his family. That's pretty cool. That's the first time the Bible, King James Bible, uses the word liberty. Mm -hmm. It's to free up the land. You send people back to their families. It's it. Let it all go, man. That's a result. I mean, it, it's an amazing thing. Uh, if we ever get to it on Wednesday night, well, I'm, I'm going to wrap up taking a couple looks at the because. Uh, Genesis has 50 chapters, and number 50 is pretty interesting in King James Bible. But anyway, um, liberty, you're on your, you're free. You go seven times seven, that's 49. In the 50th year, it's Jubilee. Down at the, down at the Dr. Peacocks in November, they have what's called, which I've been to several times, so we're going to go down again this year, it's the Jubilee. That's just what they call it. It's where all the preachers come in. It's a good time to get around the preaching the Word of God, singing and all that stuff for, for, for three, four days. And it's, it's just a time to set the world aside, man, and just have some time around the Word of God and, and the Lord and all that stuff. Well, for the Israelite, you let everything go, man. Debts, all that stuff, servanthood, family. It, it's free, man, in the 50th year. That's the first time God. So take that picture for that Old Testament Jew and now apply it to what you have in Christ, mm -hmm. only on steroids. You're, you are so free. Mm -hmm. What's crazy is Brother Bird said something interesting. He said, it's your time. It's really his time, but he gives it back to you to see what you'll do with your time mm -hmm. and the liberty he's given you. Mm -hmm. Wild stuff, man. You're told to stand fast. It's liberty, Galatians. Why are you letting somebody put you back under shackles? Go with me over to Isaiah, the classic passage in Isaiah. Just get back to Isaiah 61, please. The classic. We're not going to read the Luke 4 one, even though Luke 4 one is a, a very, very close mirror. The Lord does leave out the tensions. But I'd like you, like you to read this one, Justin. Isaiah 61, 1, 2, and 3, please. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me, because the Lord hath appointed me to preach good tidings unto the meek. He hath sent me to pluck fine. Bind up the brokenhearted to proclaim liberty to the captives. There you go. And the opening of prison of the prison to them that are bound. Yep. To proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord and the day of vengeance of our God, to comfort all that mourn, to point unto them that mourn in Zion, to give unto them beauty for ashes, the oil of joy for mourning, the garment of praise for the spirit of heaven, uh, heaviness, that they might be called. Uh, trees of righteousness, the planting of the Lord, that he might be glorified. Amen. I understand where that's at. I get exactly where we're at. But did he not give you the oil of joy for sadness? Didn't he give you different garments instead of mourning when he saved you? Mm -hmm. Didn't he change your whole, did he make you a new creature in Christ? Mm -hmm. Well, part of that is the liberty. He set you free from the, the bondage of sin. He set you free from that prison in the center of the earth called hell. That has gates and bars. It's amazing what we have in Jesus Christ. The, the freedom not to do what I want to do. The freedom to serve him. I don't, there are plenty of commandments. Romans 12, 13, there's plenty of commandments, but that's not what makes me spiritual. You want to do it with the power of the Spirit of God and because he has made me free to serve him. And the yoke of bondage that people put on you, you better be in church every time the doors are open. Or what? Mm -hmm. I've always wondered what it, or what? Yeah. You should be in church because you want to be in church. But things yes. happen where you can't be. Vacations happen. Things happen in life where you can't, well, you're probably going to lose some rank in the millennial kingdom if you're not here every time. I'm not like that. Contrary to popular belief, I'm not, I don't, I don't, I don't, I can't stand that stuff, man. Because it just, it just it smells of religion just mm -hmm. creeping back in. I just hear the chains rattling in the corners where somebody wants to put me back in bondage. That's what's happened to the Galatians believers, man. 
circumcised or not circumcised? Mm-hmm. Moses or Jesus? We'll stand fast. Don't let anybody move you off it. Don't let get knocked off your pins. Don't be easily persuaded. And take advantage of the liberty you have to go serve the Lord. Mm-hmm. How can Paul be locked up the majority of his adult saved life and still say he's freer than any man without the shackles? How can he stand in front of Agrippa, shackled up and says, man, I wish to God you were just like me, except for these bonds, because if I didn't have these bonds, I could even do more. Mm-hmm. It's crazy stuff, man. It's really good. I like it. Luke, cha- uh, I'm sorry, uh, John chapter 8, brother Bert. John chapter 8. John chapter 8, please. Probably my favorite chapter in all the Gospels, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. It's just Awesome. Brother Bird, I need you to get 29, if you could, to 36. And he that sent me is with me. The Father hath not left me alone, for I do always those things that please him. As he spake these words, many believed on him. Then said Jesus to those Jews which believed on him, If ye continue in my word, then are ye my disciples indeed. And ye shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. Amen. They answered him, We be Abraham's seed, and are never in bondage to any man. How sayest thou that ye should be made free? Jesus answered them, Verily, verily, I say unto you, Whosoever committed sin is the servant of sin. And the servant abideth not in the house forever, but the son abideth forever. If the Lord, if the Son therefore shall make you free, ye shall be free indeed. Amen. Now you know how crazy people can get. And you know they're spooled up because of what the Lord did for that woman caught in, the, in adultery, the very act. Probably with a Pharisee. Probably with a religious leader. How did they know this whole thing? The whole thing smells of a, of a, of a setup from the day one. So now he, after she is made free and he lets her go after writing down with, a, with his finger in the dirt, he's, neither do I condemn thee. Just go and sin no more. And now the boys jump on him. Now they accuse him of being born of fornication when one of their own probably just committed fornication. And there's this whole thing, and the Lord says, Raven, Brother Bird just read it. You know what? If the Son of Man makes you free, you should be free indeed. And they're like, we've never been in bondage to any man. Do you remember Pharaoh? Do you remember Shanachariah? Do you remember 70 years? You see how Jesus, he can, he can mess your mind up if you don't give heed to his words. They're so in Infuriated with the Savior cutting them down, letting that woman go, and getting them from the youngest to the oldest. And now when he, they start getting to it, all they can do is call them names. You're born of fornication. Where's your father? And all that stuff. You know, I'm just, you know, schoolyard stuff. And he says, you know, well, if I make you free, you'll be free indeed. Well, we've been, what do you mean? What do you mean? We've always been free. Uh, wow. Did you not attend history class? <laughs> Did you not, did you not uh, uh, attend a uh, uh, history class at the uh, high school of Jerusalem? Yeah. But he's not even talking about the bondage to man. What is he talking the bondage of? Brother Bert read it. Bondage to what? Sin. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I brought you here because of the liberty we have. There is no sin you and I have to commit at any time, date or place. That's what's so horrible about my Christianity, about yours, is that our stuff is premeditated, thought out, and then just... Yeah. Because the liberty there is not talking about Shanachariah and Nebuchadnezzar and Pharaoh and all that stuff. He's saying, no, if I make you free from sin, you're free. I'm gonna, I'm gonna. You missed the whole point, guys. Because how did it start out? A woman taken in sin in the very act. And he's trying to say, if I can make her free, I can make you free. But you don't want to have You don't want to hear, hear what I'm saying. Yeah, man. The Lord has a way of, uh, as Dr. Rodman would say, he's got a wrench to fit every nut in the world. And that, that Savior can take that and just get it. The point being right here is that, you know what? Uh, you're free from the power of sin. Don't go back on any of that bondage. Sin always brings bondage. Go to 1 Corinthians chapter number 8, please, Karen. 1 Corinthians 8, get a couple more, and we'll have to shut now. Please, 1 Corinthians chapter number 8. Karen, get uh, get verses one through nine, please. 
Now as touching things offered unto idols, you know that we all have knowledge. Knowledge puffs us up, but charity edifies. Okay, can I make a quick comment here? Well, I'm going to make a quick comment here anyway. How many of you have ever had that verse used against you when you know more Bible than the person you're talking to and they get angry with you? Now it's nothing that. What are you, jealous? It seems you're getting puffed up right now because you don't know the book like I do. Yeah. They all, that's, that's their favorite verse. Right? You're not, not puffed up. You're just angry because you don't know anything. Sorry. Yeah. Not. That's, that's what, yeah. But then when you have knowledge and charity, you're like, well, I, I, do, I do have charity. Well, you know what I mean. No, I don't know what you mean. <laughs> If I knew if I knew what you yeah. mean, I wouldn't. Yeah. Mackenzie, that's funny. I don't care who you are. <laughs> Verse number two. And if any man think that he knoweth anything, he knoweth nothing. Yeah, that's the awesome. That's awesome. Yeah. But if any man love God, the same yeah. is known unto him. Amen. As concerning therefore the eating of those things that are offered in sacrifice unto idols, we know that an idol is nothing in the world, and that there is none other God. For though there be that that are called gods, whether in heaven or in earth, as there be gods many and lords many, but to us there is but one God, the Father, of whom are all things, and we in him, and one Lord Jesus Christ, by whom are all things, and we by him. Howbeit there is not in every man that knowledge, if some was conscious of the idol unto this hour, eat it as a thing offered unto an idol, and their conscience being weak is defiled. Mm -hmm. But meat commendeth us not to God, for neither if we eat are we the better, neither if we eat not are we the worse. But take heed lest by any means this liberty of yours become a stumbling block to them that are weak. Okay, I'm doing this for a reason as we take apart verse number one in Galatians 5.1 is that I am free from sin. I am free from the power and bondage of sin. I'm free from hell. You can preach all day on hell. I'll just enjoy it. Think about the people, however, that are going there. And they need to rack my efforts to try and uh, free some of those folks with the same bondage Christ gave to me. But you can preach on it because I'm free from it. I have the liberty. You can preach on it all day long. Stuff like helping. But when you get this, I'm free from the power of sin if I choose to take that power. But you know what he says right there? He says, be careful in all the liberty you do have. Now, switching gears a little bit, make sure you don't use that liberty to cause somebody else to stumble. Your companion verse to this is Romans 14. You don't, don't have to go there. We're not, we're not going to go because you read the whole chapter. But when you go through this, be, just because I can eat anything I want, if I was in front of a brother that didn't eat it, and it's not offered to an idol, mm. I could just abstain from eating it. For his sake. In other words, I have freedom to help somebody else in their growth, not to say, oh, you're stupid. I, why can't you? We have liberty in Christ. See, that's the other side of this. Mm -hmm. You have to give both of it. You can't just say, well, if you, you are. But then the Bible lays out some things in Romans 14 and 1 Corinthians 8 where you've got to be careful about using that liberty to the point where you affect another brother in Christ or a sister in Christ. What I might allow in my life that's not sinful, you may look at it and go, I can't do that. Yeah. While I'm around you, I, can't, I shouldn't do that because it might affect you. It, 100% not convicted about, not moved about, it's not sin on my end, but that might be the tipping point for you. That's where the liberty we have in Christ is phenomenal, but I'm not to take that and just say, I don't care what you think, brother, I'm just going to do what I want. Even just the way that comes off, which I know I've been around people who do that, I'm like, it just comes off like you're just a prideful jerk, and you're not obedient to this, because you... you you doing what you do might wreck somebody's testimony for the next 20 years. You don't know. Do you have liberty? Sure do. In fact, I'm supposed to stand fast and have liberty. 100%. I'm not supposed to give it up for anything. But I better be careful how I use it. Particularly around the brethren. It might hit people differently and ruin their testimony or their life. I'll, I'll give you a real, this is, this is going to probably not be a good example, but let me give you a quick example as we wrap this up. I don't have a personal problem with a guy wearing shorts. I'm, I'm not talking, you know, the old 1980s, you know, <laughs> the I'm working out with the Reebok high top yeah. doing, you know, Jane Fonda workout. Yeah. Now, 
If this is convicting you, brother, don't worry. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? You know what I'm talking about. Yeah. Back in Asia, where yeah. the shorts are up to here, and yeah. I'm like, yeah, it's horrible. <laughs> Unless you got Earl Campbell thighs, put those things away. <laughs> but the reality is, I mean, even where you know shorts down to the, which I, I that's the style I just like. It's where I wear on the golf course. When it's 100 degrees out, I'm not wearing a suit playing golf. Sorry, <laughs> yeah. that gets me get out of the bath. But you know what? But you have to be careful because you know how short you know, yeah. you you listen. You know why you don't have to have dress codes? The Spirit of God's already told you, don't yes. wear that, ma'am, and don't yeah. wear that, sir. The Spirit of God's already said, don't wear it, but you just want to test the waters anyway. Yeah. That's where you're taking your liberty and using it to maybe ruin somebody else's testimony. Yeah. I, I don't have a problem with men wearing shorts. I really don't. But you got to be careful. Me wearing shorts as a preacher, or a, I don't even like that word, Pat, that might affect somebody and say, well, preacher does it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Is there anything sinful in me wearing? Oh, well, you know, the legs of a man all stop twisting the scriptures, man, because you have ugly legs. <laughs> uh, you know what? I, I've heard preachers preach now. Well, you know, it doesn't take pl uh, uh, pleasure the strength of the leg, uh, legs of a man. I'm like, I know that verse, hmm. but just because you don't have any strength in your legs doesn't I mean, <laughs> but you're using that to preach against shorts. No, you ought to use some liberty with the power of the Holy Ghost to say, you know what? I don't need to wear shorts amongst those people because hmm. it might affect them. That's a really weird and maybe not a good illustration, but it's something that I'm thinking of. You know what? Uh, I know tank tops and that stuff. You got to be really careful yeah. because you don't know how. You know, Paulie's at home. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I only off, have one off. tank top, but I barely wear it. Shirts, yeah, pull it, pull it down, <laughs> show them the, the cleft and chest. You know, I, I call it. I get it. There's nothing you're gonna do that. I've never done that. I just, you know, there's never been a whole t-shirt in my house for about 15 years. <laughs> Especially after a try workout. Those are the best. <laughs> awesome. But anyway, you, you got to be real careful about that. Yeah. And I don't use the liberty I have in Christ that causes somebody else to sin or to stumble. Mm -hmm. I mean, I, Brother John Sarah, he's allowed to tell you stories about certain things that he knew he could eat, but he wouldn't eat because it would affect somebody else in another tribe. Mm -hmm. uh, Brother John would not wear a suit over in Africa. He'd wear the traditional dress. <laughs> you wear that back here, he'd be like, no, no, well, that's what they wear over there. It's not sinful, not offensive. And I don't want to cause them some by me wearing a suit. Because you know who wears suits over in his country? Jehovah. Jehovah's Witnesses and yeah. Mormons. Yeah. Mm -hmm. See, you just, I'm, what I'm saying is you got to be spiritually sensitive with the standing fast. And I can, I'm supposed to do it. And I have liberty untold against sin and hell and all that through Christ. <laughs> but i got to be careful not to take it to the point where I don't care what you think. Yeah. I'll do what I want. Well, that's going to affect the body of Christ, man. Yeah. Excuse me. It could. That's a stupid thing about the shorts. But <laughs> I just picture a preacher going scuba diving, and he unzips his scuba suit, and he's got a suit on. Like, Come on, man! <laughs> Galatians chapter five. I mean, honestly. But again, where's the spirit? Where where do we allow the spirit of God to? Where do we allow room for Him to work and tell us what's right and wrong in the Word of God? Mm -hmm. uh, this is going to sound really horrible. I don't mean to be sound horrible or to be dirty or crass, but obviously wearing a speedo would be a problem. Yeah. Yeah. I'm not. That's all I need to say. Yeah. I mean, come on. You, but you know that. Yeah. You just want to disobey and do it. I, I, but I'm not going to put a rule down and say. Oh, no, no, listen, the Spirit of God is present. Now, if you're just completely, you know, if you're saved and you're dressing like a harlot, you will get a dress. Yeah. yeah. But what if there's somebody lost came in here? Mm -hmm. Tattoos, leather pants, chains, and they were lost. You know what a lot of Baptist churches would do? Well, we'll have another service for you. <laughs> they wouldn't say that, but that's the way they get treated. Mm -hmm. Now, when you're saved, you've got the Spirit of God inside you, you, you know what's right and wrong, man. You do. Because yeah. the Word of God will back it up with the Spirit of God inside you. But you've got to be careful. We have all that liberty. I'm supposed to stand fast in it, but just don't, don't let it go to where it's just free for all. Yeah. I don't have to say it to this crowd. I know that, but there's some people probably watching thinking, well, because, you know, I, well, I got two more minutes left. Now. I'm just going to go. Uh, what are the two ten? What are the two things that oppose each other in theology? Calvinism and what? What is Arminianism primarily, Brother Bird? It's sort of a, you can lose your salvation. You got 
you got to keep yourself saved. And kind of it's in, you're out. Yeah, you're in, you're out. You know, it's like the old daffodil. He loves, he loves me. Yeah. He loves me not. I'm saved. I'm not saved. I'm saved. It's like that picture of the daffodil. And the Calvinists are, oh no, you're locked in from the foundation before the foundation of the world, and that's, you know, that's that. So they're they're two opposed. Well, when it comes to liberty, I mean, seriously, man, you got you got to balance that thing out. You you can't go all Armenian where, well, I just I, I don't care one day I am and one day I'm not. No, well, ladies, you know how low a dress, you know how high a dress is, you know how low a top is. Mm. Guys, you know what pants are and what pants not. You you do. If you're saved, the spirit of God is inside you, going. Uh, mm. Take a look in the mirror. Yeah, you're about to affect somebody else. You have liberty in Christ. You could, you should, you need to stand fast in it. Let nobody take that away from you. But you know, that's why Americans are so awesome. I'm an American. Mm. <laughs> well, you know, get into everything. Mm -hmm. Well, thank God, I'm, I'm a child of God. Yeah. Mm -hmm. of Back in Galatians five. All right, I have one. Who's up next? Mm -hmm. Haley, last one. I know we're going to Galatians 5, and I'm getting ahead of myself, but that's okay. You can mark this verse down, it's already talked about, and we don't have to deal with it again. <laughs> <laughs> I'm saying, you know what I'm saying? Haley, read verse 13, please. This will be the capper of, of, of 5, and where we were in 1 Corinthians 8. For brethren, he has been called unto liberty. Only use not liberty for an occasion to the flesh, but by love serve one another. That, that's, that's the capper of Romans 14, 1 Corinthians, and this one right here. 1 Corinthians 8 and this right here. I'm supposed to stand fast in that liberty. I'll, I'll, I'll fight for that liberty. Just don't take it away from me. I have it in Christ. Even if I was locked up, the liberty I have in Christ from, from sin and hell and bondage and all that stuff. But I just got to be careful not to use that liberty as I stand fast and to affect somebody else in a negative way. Justin, pray for us. And we are out for the evening, please, if you could. Heavenly Father, I want to be allowing us to be here at church today, Lord. Well, thank you for the message that uh, Dave had for us, Lord. Um, thank you for your word, Lord. I want to ask that uh, we'll be able to learn uh, something from it, Lord. Thank you for the liberty that we have from you, Lord. Amen. And, uh, I want to thank you. Uh, I want to ask that we don't take it for granted, Lord, and that we, we use it to serve you uh, willingly and faithfully and, and lovingly, Lord. Amen. And uh, Lord, I want to ask that you'll help us to serve you this week, Lord. Amen. Everything in your name, Lord Jesus. Amen. 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 Amen.